PhD in Biological Engineering, Chairman and CEO of Cytosol, and I'm considered a world-renowned expert in personalized and precision medicine. You can find my resume online. In 1962, the National Vaccine Act was signed by John F. Kennedy to give rise to the CDC to create the vaccine guidelines. There are two observations that I'd like to share to put that event in context. In April of 1961, Kennedy gave a speech to the National Academy of Sciences. He shared that the conundrum of modern democracy is that given that the problems we face have become so complex, we now rely on small groups of scientists to enable politicians to make decisions. And Kennedy emphasized that such decision making was based on the assumption the scientists were objective, disinterested third parties. Look, we all now know that's not true. Science has become fundamentally pay to play, and in fact, probably the oldest profession now. You can think about what that is. Second, at that time, the science and the model of the immune system was very nascent, going back to 1915, and was based on a two-box model of the immune system. The innate immune system, box one, communicating to the adaptive immune system, box two, and the immune health was defined as the upregulation of antibodies. Now, based on the recommendations from scientists at that time, and by this simplistic two-box model, the Vaccination Act was instituted. Today, the entire basis of vaccination is still based on that 50 to 100-year-old model of the immune system. Less than 90 days ago, I was honored to be the invited speaker at the Distinguished Prestige Lecture at the National Science Foundation. My lecture was on the modern immune system. The reality is the modern immune system consists of at least five systems. The innate immune system, the adaptive immune system, the interferon or the IFN system, which is a missing link between the adaptive and the innate, the microbiome, which interacts with the gut-brain axis to the neural system. The modern immune system informs us, one, interventions such as vaccines can affect other subsystems, effectively, most of which are largely unknown. Two, one size doesn't fit all. And three, the science ain't settled on the risk and safety assessment standards for vaccines. In closing, the lack of understanding was reflected in the many observed injuries from 62 to 86. Till today, the 1986 National Vaccine Childhood Injury Act sponsored by Ted Kennedy and Waxman set up the vaccine courts to remove liability away from manufacturers. That was a band-aid solution to to preserve the 1962 act instead of simply repealing it. Since then, recognizing injuries that were occurring, another band-aid on top of the 1968 band-aid was allowed, exemptions to allow at least some justice. Today's families in this room are scrambling, begging to fight to retain exemptions to a mandate that was created based on outdated science in 1962. The entire 1962 program, the state imposing its will on the individual to something as sovereign as the bloodstream should never have occurred. Today, all of you have an opportunity to show the way forward by killing this bill. It's time to take a deep breath and rip off these band-aids. You have an opportunity to send a signal that not only are vaccine mandates wrong, but it's also time to enter the future of real immune health, personalized and precision medicine, where science matters and one size does not fit all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Are there any questions or comments? Senator Summers? Thank you for that. You spoke so quickly, I didn't get your name. It's Dr. Shiva Ayadure. Just call me Dr. Shiva. Just one minute, Senator Summers. Doctor, would you also make sure that you sign up with the clerk so they have your name? Sure. Thank you. Yes, I have a PhD in biological engineering, not biomedical engineering, biological engineering, which is essentially where the modern science of all sorts of pharma uh, genes, you know, everything came from uh, in 2003. It's a new department at MIT set up. I also hold three other degrees in engineering, in electrical engineering at MIT, and mechanical engineering at MIT, plus a degree in design. And I'm also a Fulbright Scholar in the integrate, in integrated medicine. Well, that's extremely impressive. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, bottom line is that modern science is old. I mean, the the science used for 
sort of nailed the issue here. Look, it's as Kennedy said, you know, uh, the immune system is a very complex system. In 1962, we knew about it, and I'm giving John Kennedy the benefit of the doubt. He used that understanding at that time, which was a two simple box model, this adaptive and immune system, to say, okay, let's put vaccines on people. But today, you know, starting in 2003, when the Human Genome Project ended, what it revealed was we have about 20,000 genes, the same number of genes as a worm. So complexity of the human being is not the number of genes. It's the interconnections of the genes, the proteins, the very complex system. So what resulted in 2003 is a field called systems biology, and it also resulted in this concept of personalized medicine. One size does not fit all. So given that understanding, even the NIH director, Francis Collins, has said we need to move towards personalized medicine, which means giving what, what's, what you need may be different than what I need. And this means that we need to decentralize medicine back to the patient-doctor relationship. That's where health emerges. So the top-down model of 1962 is frankly so old. It's based on old science. So today what we need to do is go back to what you said, which is health is going to emerge by me having a relationship with my doctor, them understanding my personal, not only genetics, my epigenetics, my lifestyle, the, the considerations, and figuring out what's right for me. That's how we lower the cost of health care, and that's where we deliver real health. The entire 1962 program needs to just go away. The whole thing is wrong. So 1986, because all these injuries were taking place, because of the fact that we were trying to impose a standard guideline schedule, that we started, uh, you know, saying we're going to uh, solve that with this band-aid of eliminating the liability to vaccine manufacturers, and we're still uh, going through that. So in many ways, people here begging to take away exemptions is so wrong. The whole mandate should go away. We should decentralize health and hold the sovereign relationship between the patient and the doctor as a way where health emerges, if we care about health, period. That's science. Yeah, I appreciate that, because I, I, I think we're in the wrong spot in this whole debate, and you know, today when we hear about that there are people testifying saying vaccines are great, and then we're hearing people testify I've had injuries, um, I think both sides, there is merit to that discussion. Certainly, you know, my, my son just went for a surgery uh, for the second time. He's had two in his life, and he has reacted very badly to pain, uh, certain pain medication um, and had severe reaction. My eldest son didn't have any reaction. So, uh, just watching that occur, um, you know, that is part of medicine. And so, that went into his mind now. The doctors won't prescribe certain types of medication for him because he's working. My daughter's allergic to amoxicillin. She had a breakout, same thing. And I just, I worry that we, we're losing that discussion and going backwards. When well, we've put so much emphasis, even on the state level, you know, of that personalized medicine, um, you know, how, how do we get there? And so, if you have any suggestions going forward. Well, well, the way we get there is to go to the future. We have to go into the future. Uh, Connecticut, I know, uh, I was here before, has a real interest in going to the future in biological sciences. That future means we have to let go of the past. We have to begin there. And the future means recognizing that we have modern technologies. Look, the one of the companies that I run that came out of my work at MIT was to do personalized medicine, where we use the computer to understand your genetics versus Richard's or someone else's, the complexity of that. That's how we build airplanes today. So those technologies are here today. And that's why I'm here today to let you guys know, look, the old model was designed with a very nascent understanding of the immune system. We have the innate, the adaptive, the interferon, our gut microbiome, the neural systems, all of these systems interact, sticking something into the bloodstream and not thinking the body is going to make its own uh, changes and which will vary in each individual. Some people may be fine. Other people may have an autoimmune disorder. Other people may have extreme type of neuroinflammation because the gut microbiome communicates up through the neuroinflammation processes and results in extreme what you call autism, okay? Everyone is different. This has to be decentralized back to the individual. We should support the future in technology. You guys have a huge opportunity here. I know, uh, 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 Congressman Steinberg, your, your, your support the future biological sciences. That's the signal that you guys can send here today. We gotta get, you know, Kennedy tried to do a nice thing in 62. Ted Kennedy tried to put a band-aid on his uh, brother's work, but we gotta let it all go. It's old science, period. Thank you, Thank you Representative Pettit. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank
thank you, Doctor, for your uh, testimony. I, I did watch your uh, entire uh, lecture at the NSF on the immune system, but and I, I don't disagree that broad philosophical strokes, but we we have to deal with the here and now. So we have some personalized medicine in terms of looking at the genetics of tumor markers and saying you're going to respond to this monoclonal, and you're not. You're not going to respond at all. You're going to respond great. But what do we do about vaccines in 2020? We're not at a point where we can individualize vaccine therapy for 300 plus million people right now. So I realize it's a, it's a broad question. But where do you think we head in terms of vaccination policy for a nation since we're not at a point where we can actually individualize right now? It's a good question. Uh, so I think everyone on the pro or anti-vax side, you know, it's an unfortunate dialectic that's been created, can agree the real issue here is we all probably in this room, whether you're pro or anti, want immune health for ourselves and our children, right? And what is immune health? Immune health means that your body is resilient. Resilient means it faces some predators and pathogen. It, it faces it with strength and it can bounce back stronger, right? That's called resilience. Well, how do you achieve immune health? That's the central question. Well, if you look at the understanding of the modern immune system versus what we had in 1962 or 1915, it shows that resilience is a combination of multiple components. We strengthen the gut. We strengthen the gut microbiome. Uh, the ratios of gut microbiome are extremely important. The thyroid is extremely important. Vitamin A is extremely important. When the thyroid is working properly, carotenoids, proper food gets converted to vitamin A. If you don't have proper iodine, the thyroid doesn't get converted. What I'm, this is just one example I'm sharing with you. It is a very complex system. You can't impose one size. This has to be given to the doctor-patient relationship. Look, I trust most doctors who went to medical school aren't just in, in it for the money. Okay, let's give the benefit of the doubt. Most doctors actually went into it for noble duty. They want to help people and they want to serve science. They want to increase people's immune health. I believe by decentralizing this, repealing all of these mandates, we honor that relationship. And I think people are quite smart. By the time most of you came into this room today, you made 100 decisions for yourselves. The state didn't tell you what to do. Why don't we start honoring the fact that we have very smart people in the world. People know how to make decisions, particularly medical trained people in that relationship. It's a, like you said, it's a multifactorial problem. It cannot be imposed top down. We have to give decentralize it back to that patient-doctor relationship. And as tools come, it'll get better and better and better. But I can tell you, the top-down model is a recipe for disaster. We're gonna keep this pro-vax, anti-vax dialectic. You're gonna get a lot more people angry and you're gonna have a revolution on your hands. But essentially, for right now, you, you would go to an elective vaccine system where people can elect to have, have the vaccines or, or not have them. Well, well, what I'm saying is, this is about immune health. Let me give you an example. When I grew up in Bombay, India, we had slums, okay? If you're growing up in slums and your body's under constant onslaught of pathogens, your body never has a chance to recover. It's no different than me working out every day and then my body doesn't have a chance to recover, right? On the other hand, if you don't work out at all, you get flabby. Well, that's like the kid living in a little bubble and his parents don't let him out and have him wash his hands every day. That kid may need a little tighter of vaccines because he's never seen anything. These are two different extremes I'm giving you because he's living in such an artificial environment, he may need quote unquote artificial vaccination. But the reality is this is a broad range. So we have to honor the doctor-patient relationship. And I, I have great faith in people, I have great faith in mothers, I have great faith in doctors that they want to do the right thing. And I think that's the signal we're sending. And in great honor to what John Kennedy attempted to do in 1962, we're in a very different system today. After the passage of the Mansfield Act in 1970, you know, science dollars have become highly competitive. Academics today do practice the oldest profession. You know, not the best scientists get tenure. It's a guy who can bring in the money. So it has become pay to play. We have to also consider that. Thank you. Thank you again. I'm very honored to present. Thank you again for all the great work you guys are doing. Thank you. Thank you.